Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. Um, today we are discussing the digital renaissance, basically why and how companies are not being able to adapt to the digital era. Uh, today we have a special guest with me, um, Jonathan Canales. He's my friend. He is a, a di digital business specialist with a background in IT and development. Uh, hey, Jonathan, how you doing, man? Hey, man, how's it going? Thanks for uh, inviting me to your program. I'm thrilled to be here, man. Yeah, it's good to have you. Um, and, you know, we are, we are actually live streaming today, so this is the first time we're doing this. Usually we, uh, you know, we're, in the, we're in like, kind of like a studio <laughs> with uh, Dan, who's not here. <laughs> but um, we, uh, you know, this is a good topic to discuss because, um, you know, the internet, the internet is big equalizer right now. And uh, like, as you know, you live in Mexico, as, as I do in Tijuana. And uh, I mean, we see it around us. <laughs> um, how, yeah, <laughs> how, you know, even, you know, for normal stuff, I mean, I usually tell, tell the joke that uh, the most, most businesses know how to do is send emojis to themselves. Uh, <laughs> that's, as much, that's as much digital competence they have. But uh, when we talk about you know digital transformation, um, what is what it, what comes to your mind? Well, basically, with digital transformation, uh, it's a very wide topic that we can discuss, uh, and it comes from even marketing, sales, customer service, uh, IT development, uh, business uh, making your business smarter. But basically. For a digital transformation for me is bringing, um, basically making a business a, a velociraptor, make it okay. easy, make it fast, and uh, touch the, the like the, the the farthest places on earth, so you can pitch or sell your product, sell your service, and make it uh, interesting for uh, the new the new guys like my kids, your kids, the people that will be like involved with the digital era by, by basically. All the people that have the digital era on their DNA, so that's that's for me um, the g digital transformation to touch e every soul that you can in the most efficient way and the best way possible. So basically, it's how do you make how do you make business more human? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, totally, totally. Because right now, uh, like it, like uh, our generation is is like a mix is like a mix from the the legacy area and the digital era. So yeah. basically, we, we can uh, like um, digest very easily, like companies having like things in the old fashioned way. But for our kids and the new, new generation would be just insanely crazy, like going to a, to a manual process or a legacy process that will be just don't make sense for them. So yeah. that's that's basically it. What, what, I'm, what we're talking about here. Yeah. And, and, you know, our generation and the generation that's you know the, the the one that's coming up behind us is basically um, I always tell people that you know you and I were born with uh, with a video you know video game controllers <laughs> uh, and and uh, even though with a with a with a manual typewriters remember yeah <laughs> but we still I mean yeah we we still got that and even the the electronic electronic ones but uh, the generation that's coming up behind us they were born with the internet in their hands basically. <laughs> Because we are like the bridge to them, and even even us who are more, you know, I'm still in the millennial. Are you you are millennial too? You are right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So we're millennials. We fit into that thing, and um, you know, we just work differently. <laughs> we we work differently, and and we have different expectations of you know of 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 the world and. You know that's that's directly related to digital and the internet because um, I mean just an example and you know you and I were, are, are kind of working on this project with a legacy company a, a, a huge and uh, old legacy company that you know we you know still uses paperwork for <laughs> for you know normal transactions and um, you know you and I are like why the hell we got to go through that process I mean when we can just do it you know through a fucking app <laughs> yeah totally and like. Basically, you're struggling with a mindset, and and here's the, like the interesting part: like you're struggling with a mindset of a whole company. Yeah. People that are decision makers that have the money to do it, and and 
and for us, like bringing bringing uh, an option for them is just totally a no-brainer. So let's let's do it. Uh, like find the correct strategy to do it, and that's it. But that change that will be like making a different work more efficient than they they are doing like ten to fifteen years. It's like a it's like scary. I don't know why uh, they are terrified because it's it's pretty simple. Like you said, like an app. They're selling like a gazillion <laughs> products and services on a daily basis. Do it everything manual and counting one by one those products have been sold by the end of the day. And we're talking about like eight thousand salesmen. Yeah. And I was like, when they were telling us like, oh, we we know how how much we sell at the end of the day after each one of the salesmen count like the receipts. And I was like, my my oh, God, open wide. <laughs> Uh, like what my mouth was open on like really <laughs> oh yes it's pretty simple you know i was like oh my god this is a, this is a totally totally a challenge <laughs> <laughs> well what what uh what types of digital transformations have you been involved with well basically when i when i started uh, i used to work for for a legacy uh cell phone company mm -hmm. where basically there was no text messages there was no even there was no digital phones. Everything was analog, CDMA and TDMA, and back in the day. And I was you know, like in a part of a transformation with a with an European company bought it, and basically uh, we got uh, the first 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 uh, starters of having everything digital, making it efficient, and it was it was it was a quite a challenge. And then. And uh, we got like like as we work together in a in a big call center, basically it's like more than like fifteen thousand employees in it, and it was a digital transformation. When when we moved from the legacy systems to the voice over IP, and nowadays in the company that we were like basically selling books, now we do we we deliver digital content. This last one has been a totally totally different. Um, experience for us like and and, and 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 it's also for a business right like they're selling books to schools that was their main business right now they're selling digital content they're selling um interactivity with tablets and mobile devices to the teachers and to the students so everything has it has been moved from the from the legacy era to the digital era so f even for schools that we're touching more than um 15,000 students it, it's it's a it was an amazing amazing experience doing that and as you can see it, it's it's very easy to say that we did it but it was an effort a lot of efforts of different people and and has has been a very very awesome experience and what what was the you know what were your lessons learned in terms of um, you know what obstacles and uh, you know ways around because I mean it's all about you know, eliminating obstacles or just going around them. Yeah, well, uh, basically, the, most big, the biggest obstacle when you if you digitalize a company or when you start moving ahead and catch up with, with, the, with the current generation is a mindset. It's yeah. not about technology. It's not about process. It's about, it's about mindset. It's about knowing that you can start uh, doing uh, X, Y, or Z, but down the road, you need to change your path because the market is changing day by day. So that is the, the most difficult part of it like having people to adapt to change yeah that's the biggest 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 obstacle because we have been having a lot of uh, clients and a lot of uh, uh, co-workers that just they don't adapt to change and in a couple of months not even years a couple of months they're not a fit for the company and the company is not a fit for them so uh, that's that's the biggest obstacle um. You know, I've I've been involved with with digital uh, in transformations, both both in big ones and in small ones. Uh, but I think the 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 more the best perspective that I have is you know is working with startups, because you are going against uh, or not going against. I mean, you know, not it's not about following what is written in stone right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and basically, you know, one of when I when I consult with big companies, the question I always ask, you know, the the leaders or whatnot, uh, it's very simple. It just resets their thinking. Is I ask them, you know, knowing what you know right now, um, 
how the world exists right now, how would you start your company differently, right? Um, it usually shocks them because it's like, like what the f? <laughs> you gotta throw out the, the you gotta throw out the old the old school the you know the the old playbook because um, it's not the same. And you know I was involved with a startup uh, about seven eight years ago. That's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that um, was just right in the middle of the beginning. It was an offline type startup, but you know, basically the the interaction was huge through web, you know, through web, and that was the beginning of social media. Um, so that 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 experience gave me a good point of view as to you know how existing companies need to transform because as I as I said, this is an, this was in a this is a company that was kind of like a hybrid business model. Um, they were offline, but also online, and you know that experience, you know, put a put a big, big, you know, piece of the puzzle in my head as to, you know, how big companies should look at the world. Because up to that point, big companies were were still thinking, oh, I just need a website, <laughs> right? That that was it. <laughs> that was it. Right now, uh, and, and and you know, like I have been running, uh, I have been bumped to a couple of customers, and I'm working with like an entrepreneur firm. Here, uh, here uh, in the San Diego and Tijuana border, and it's pretty, it's pretty um, surprising that they are an entrepreneur firm. They have been like uh, doing assessments, uh, um, some kind of uh, workshops for people that wants want to have the basics for uh, as an entrepreneur. And we were talking, I was talking with these guys, and basically, uh, I was providing all the all digital options that we have for selling and for pitching. And for take care of the customers and do the call center side, hybriding, uh, like uh, evolving to a uh, CRM mix with um, with call centers and and the new strategies for selling. And they were like, "Oh, I didn't knew we were we, we can do that." And I was like, "Oh my god, this is like has been for for a couple of years now." My god. And, and those guys are teaching people how to do business. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. And and I'm working with these guys to start like moving moving them forward, uh, and as well, I'm I'm learning a lot of and doing a lot of networking with people that are trying to want to do business, and basically, they don't know how to do it. No. So um, it's it's pretty pretty surprising for me, but I'm I'm kind of getting used to it. So. <laughs> and you're and you're talking and you're 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 I'm 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 sure you're talking to uh, small businesses, right? Or just the right. one. One man shop operations or a couple of guys there operations. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. E even though uh, it, it's pretty interesting right now because as as as, as we move on time, uh, having the correct digital process, you can have about uh, three or four uh, people in a business, and you can start doing business. And yeah. You don't need a crew of uh, hundred people or fifty people, or uh, you don't have to wait to get the budget of a couple how. About no. a couple hundred thousand dollars or millions to start doing business. But the thing is that uh, technology, with a good uh, strategy, you can like save a lot of money with a lot of people and do a lot. Of, you can do it very efficiently. That you can start small and grow very very fast. And one of the things that, like, as you as you have been experienced yourself, using the correct process and technology is very scalable. So you can yeah. be like having like five people in in three months, and by the next quarter of the year. You have to upgrade it to six or seven because your business has been grown a lot, but that's that's in a, uh, a ripple effect about having a very good strategy with your digital business. Yeah, uh, what do you think are, are the top barriers to you know to adopting digital? Mindset, first of all, that's a mindset. If you can um, inspire your people to be. Uh, more flexible adapting to change that you, you have like the 30 40 percent of everything then obviously find the correct way for doing uh, digital your business because you can buy so I, and I have been running around uh, running in in a lot of uh, people that want to do business and someone a friend of his friend or someone that they know um, basically uh, Recommending a software, recommending a CRM, recommending an ERP, and they were like all all uh, excited about it and go buy buy it, and then they they think that just by buying a software <laughs> or buying some technology, 
everything is has to be like uh, automatic, right? But no, yeah. it, you have to, you need to have a strategy about it. So that's basically finding the correct uh, uh, softwares and tools that will fit your business. The you know yeah last year um, last year I think it was September. Uh, so this there's this startup called Cabbage, which basically funds or gives out loans to uh, you know, to businesses, uh, small businesses in this case, and they um, you know they reached out to me to see if I could if they well basically if they could sponsor a post on my blog, <laughs> um, and I said well okay so what do you want me to write about, <laughs> um, right? And they they asked me I mean and it was very it was very funny because. I was like, wow, <laughs> okay, so this is interesting because they were asking me to write about how tech, uh, basically how technology is affects you know, business and how business can take advantage of technology, right? So I was like, okay, so that's, that's cool. Um, so I asked them a few, few more questions you know, just to kind of dig in and they were like, no, no, listen, we want you to write whatever you think because, I mean, I think we got a, you got a good angle on this, and I said, okay, so just the free, uh, just whatever the hell I want, yeah. So that's what I did, and the post, the post is called, you're either a digital business or a dead business, mm -hmm. and in the post, I basically identified uh, lack of skills, uh, digital skills, as one huge impediment towards, um, you know, adopting digital, um, simply because. And it's everywhere. I mean, even in Me I mean, Mexico is probably where we where I see it the most because if you go to school right now, um, you will see that most most of the students do in their curriculum don't have digital. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, marketing people who are coming out of there, they I mean, they most have never bought online. <laughs> I mean, how? How the hell are they supposed to, you know? Yeah, sadly that's true, and they don't have any, even their like, online portfolio or. No, they have. Else. No, no, no. They got. They ain't got shit. But you know, and I was recently talking to a to a client, and he, you know, he he sent me a curriculum because he was trying to hire people for marketing, and I said, listen, this, I'm just going to tell you this, but the people in doing marketing right now in schools. You know, unfortunately, are not trained for the future. You need to train them. So, yep. in in this project that you're asking me to do, I'm going to train him or her. <laughs> but I need to know who you are hiring to find that perfect that fit because it's not it's not about uh, oh I like her because she's funny or <laughs> oh she writes great or he or she writes great reports. No, <laughs> I mean, can yeah, she learn? Those reports are automatically. Yeah. Can she from a from a system? So I'm really, can she learn? You know can those types of things. Can, can yeah. she put input in new stuff? This is can yeah. She, can, can she go with the flow with market? That's that's one of the biggest biggest obstacles for people because they they, they don't they don't uh, are uh, playing safe, right? Yeah. And we need people that don't don't like to play safe. Yeah, and you know from a organizational point of view. If you are hiring people, you have to be open to this, because that is the future. You know, mm -hmm. one of the when I when I when I work with with companies, because you, you know my my work doesn't have to do with digital that much. It has to do more with the uh, with innovation and whatnot. But digital is part of it, and I always tell them, listen, the way the way to kill your the way to 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 innovate yourself out of you know mediocrity is to ask twenty somethings. To come into your company and say, "How do you kill me?" <laughs> and then let let them do it, right? That's how you do it. <laughs> and if you're not open to those ideas, I mean, you know, nobody's gonna want want to work for you other be beyond the paycheck, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Totally. If you don't know your blind spots, that they, they don't know anything. Competitors will do. Yeah. Yeah, competitors know your blind spots. If you don't know your blind spots, like you're like easy target for it, being uh take out of business very fast. So you're out of business. Yep. Uh, so, so that takes me to a question of, you know, business models. How does how does digital change business models? Well, basically, right now, I think that every business is a business model right now, a digital yeah. model. So, like you, uh, 
if you're like basically want to buy something, you just don't even think about going to the store. The first first thing you do just like search it online, look it up yeah. online, check Amazon, check the big the big company. They basically sell everything. Then if it, if you find your fit, you're gonna buy it. That's it. Without going out out of your office, but without going out of your home, like that's it. You don't think not even like. Taking your car, drive all the way to the store, look in uh, two or three couple of stores to buy something. Just do it online. And people yep. are in love with with a with a um, with a legacy way of doing it. But for God's sakes, it's just taking a lot of time. People, if if you measure how much money you do per hour, and you put it like in every time that you do stuff like going shopping and go find like drive. 15 miles or uh, 20 miles, six miles or whatever time does it take you to um, to a mall and you divide it all those hours against how much money it you pay for the product and there's like kind of specials in the store yeah and you you end up paying more more and more money than than the value of the product you know from a from a from, from an organizational point of view, uh, one of the key changes in business models is, you know, helping people, how people, how people make decisions. Basically, uh, what do I mean by that is basically before uh, pre-internet, <laughs> and even what it with the internet, uh, but pre-internet was basically gut gut decision making because it was all based on experience. But now with the internet and all the data that we can, you know, that we can gather from transactions and activities and whatnot. Um, you know, data data rules, and <laughs> uh, it rules for everything. It rules for hiring. It rules for, you know, how, how you know who you you know who you sell to, who do you don't sell to, um, where do you put yourself, how do you position yourself. I mean, all of these things, yeah, and it, it's it's just you know something as simple as Google Analytics. Because um, we can go, because we can go higher. You know, if we talk about data, we can go to a higher level. You know, not just business intelligence, but you know, to 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 a higher level in terms of um, you know connecting the dots between you know wearables and sensors and whatnot. But um, most people have never looked at a Google Analytics dashboard, and <laughs> much less have ever examined why their websites suck. Um, <laughs> Or taking taking you know action on you know those types of things insights you get from data, I mean it's, it's ridiculous, but that's the truth. And business you models. Know, yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting. Um, you know I've been like talking with people that own like medium businesses, and we're like proposing a couple of solutions to have like uh like uh, real time information about having how much they're selling, which part are, are the you sell the most in your website what kind of if you're selling shoes and what's this this case this company is selling shoes and you want to know exactly a lot of people how much people just are looking into your the specific model shoes with the red color red right with yep. red color with blue color and the guys and the president president and owner of the company just said you know i don't need that information i really don't care i just want to want to sell and i was like oh my god <laughs> Yeah, this guy, it's solely legacy right now. Yeah, you know how, um, you know, Uber in Tijuana, right? Yeah. So, you know, for us, Uber is, is not a, a new idea, but um, I, I think it was like three, three months ago that I jumped in a taxi because for some reason, Uber was not connecting to my phone. <laughs> okay. So I, so I had to jump in a, on a taxi, one of those uh, taxi libras and, uh, so it was a long time, you know, since I've done that. So I jumped on there, and the first thing that happened was the the the, the driver handed me his business card. Um, I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> and on the business card, it had this, you know, basically his website and whatnot, his, his URL. So I just decided I decided to to take a peek into it through my phone to see what the hell these guys are thinking, right? Um, so I went into a, I went to my phone and I went to a website and I was thinking, man, these guys are don't know what the what what they're what they're up against because, I mean, they're basically just putting a contact me when you need a ride in the website. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Whereas, whereas, you know, it's not even an app or anything like that. It's just, you know. Landing page. Yeah, yeah. And, or not even that. It's just, <laughs> it's, no. And the other thing is that the website was full of ads. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, and a lot of these people don't understand what, you know, what, what Uber is. You know, a lot of people talk about Uber like, oh, I use Uber. But they don't understand what Uber, in terms of a digital company, you know, what the future looks like. If you look at, I always tell, you know, I always tell, you know, business owners to look at their business through the, through the lens of an existing business that's disrupting another, you know, existing legacy business. In this case, I use Uber as an example. I say, okay, use Uber as a lens to look at through this stuff because this is exactly what's going to happen to most of the other shit. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same scenario. And, you know, down in Tijuana, I have, a, I have a buddy who's working with these taxi companies to build basically the Uber for taxis. And I said, well, this is bullshit because, no, number one, I know what you're doing. You're just, you're just, you're just developing. Copy. You're just, yeah. And number, well, that's one. The other thing is that you're, you're just cop, you're trying, you're, this is bad copy. Because the power, of, the power of Uber is not the nap. <laughs> it's what's behind it. It's the algorithms, it's the back end, it's all that stuff. Yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, that's a business model. You can't, you can't, you know, I always tell people that essentially business is business models competing against business models. And if all business models look the same, it's irrelevant. So <laughs> totally. that's, that's the way to that's expand. An interesting point that, that you said on the back end, because a lot of people just, just want to see a pretty website and pretty ads and pretty pictures and yeah. everything. But don't acknowledge that there's a very like all the logic of the company and all the the interesting part of a company digital company is the back end it's yeah. like uh, it's like a plumber in your house and the electrician like you're like get into this new home everything looks pretty everything's painted as you want it the kitchen is has a pretty colors the backyard has a grass and everything that's perfect and, and after a month that you're living in it and something just like you turn around and your house is it's flooded right yep. And if, if the back end is not correct, like in this case of the plumbing, your house is gonna tear up and tear down and like like, like this. So yeah. <laughs> that's the back end, and and it's and, and it's not needed for by a lot of companies and a lot of people that are trying to do business. So uh, like you said, and I totally agree with that. The the magic of like Uber like companies like Uber is like all the business thinking all the business behind the scenes, all the back end, all the information to pulling up with mobiles, all the information you can get with with your website, uh, able able to be tracking uh, with your car and how much time will it take, all that. It's uh, it's basic logic in the back end. Yeah. You know, you were mentioning strategy at the beginning. Um, strategy is very hard to copy. You know, a good strategy is hard to copy. And there are a bunch of bad strategies all over the place. Because uh, they don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, they don't make sense. They only make sense to the same people. But I mean, it's just—I mean, it's ridiculous. But it's very, very hard to to copy, you know, something you don't understand. Simplistic or superficial, it's—it's it's, you know, you got to dig deep into that. And you know, I mean, Uber obviously has weaknesses, but <laughs> I mean, it's going to be very hard to exploit at this point. Um, it's very hard to exploit, but we're, um, we're exploring new, new, new businesses like food deliveries and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's part of it. They have to be doing that yeah. because they have they have to expand and, and you know leverage the platform. And that's you know that that word right there, right there, I just said right now is platform. That's the uh, I believe that's the like the like the the the, the killer app of digital because most businesses are now like platforms. <laughs> Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I'm not saying marketplace, but most businesses can become like a platform. Why? Because ecosystems, you know, digital breaks down ecosystems. Um, as you know, APIs are like the, the mini bridges that people don't, or we don't really know, but you know, when you interact with a company, you don't know they're using API, but the API is giving you data from another service. And that's, that's when things, you know, become interesting because literally digital businesses connect, you know, they, they're not like a, like a closed box. They're not closed. They're not siloed. 
and that's what makes it interesting. Totally, totally. And uh, basically, like every app that is out there is connected through uh, with an API to a backend, with all the all the information yeah. is so all the all the all the controllers and models of the systems are. So, but basically, uh, now you said API. Now everybody's like, it's pretty interesting that it that I'm start like that I know in business. They talk up talk about APIs. Oh, uh, this system has an API, so we can connect. We just can put this this string there and this passcode or or this key, and we're connecting. That's imp and I was like, and, and I'm thinking like, really, people don't understand what an API is. What is behind no. an API? How no. how do they build an API? How do you build a system with logic to have an API smarter enough to basically connect with even with your 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 fridge and your home? Right, it, it it's pretty interesting that how, how people and for me like being starting uh, in the developing strategies. It's it, at the beginning of a couple of years ago. It was it was like uh, um, very challenging because a couple of years ago, um, we're talking about five or six years ago, an API was something that was not that that uh, that famous, like like to say famous, right? And uh, a lot of people, most of the people that didn't understand, didn't use it at, at that time. So uh, it, it was interesting, like having learning every little process behind it and how is it structured to provide services for people and do it and do uh, things um, easier for people. So yeah. it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool that you, you you brought up that topic. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's been I've I've, I've worked with. Uh, more than a few startups, and it's basic. You know, most of the most of the discussions have to do with platform. So, what well, platform, like as I was saying, is is bringing in. It's, it's not being a siloed. Of course, you 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 know, in terms of strategy, you decide what to connect and what not to. I mean, obviously, there's got to be a no there, but for the most part, you are not siloed. Um, and that's the point. Um, most, you know, like I've, you know, like I was saying. Most legacy companies, you know, to understand what an API even is and what it stands for, because you and I, I mean, we understand development. You know, we know what an API is, but take that to a to a to a huge, you know, bigger level, a big picture level, and it's a completely different scenario in terms of business because um, it's it's really just you know not not it's connecting services between you know existing services that you use. Um, it's creating an ecosystem basically. Um, you know, it's and it's and you know, in terms of of um, you know internal internal capabilities, when it comes to what we're talking about, um, you know, are you familiar with this whole movement of you know teaching people people to code? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, even though like, there's a couple of schools in, in I think it was uh, I don't remember if it was China or Japan. They were they they have this kind of uh, like games for toddlers, yeah. For like to learn them uh, to start learning them to code, yeah. Right, and like for and, and there, there was a discussion that I was having with a couple of uh, uh, investors uh, for this group of, uh, group of investors. They were like saying they're saying like uh, and we were talking about coding and oh I'm too old to start learning to code because uh, you learn like very fast when you're younger. And I was like, uh, I don't think that that is uh, that is correct because if you if you if you're learning from from the beginning um, um, from your like early years, everything just starts sticking because you don't know anything at all. But right now the thing is that a, as a grown up, you you want to start developing, especially in development. You want to understand each one each one of the pieces, and you want like uh, to have a result very fast, right? Yeah. But if you start learning code and make things happen, make things work, and it doesn't matter if you don't understand like the the whole package, but you need to go forward, and then you can start like learning uh, piece by piece, and that's when uh, the the biggest obstacle for for coding it's it's uh it's you as a grown up because you yeah. want to do everything fine and understand each one of the pieces from little by little, and then very very slow. That's why they're teaching toddlers to uh, video games, and I, I receive a tons of uh, uh, email ads where they say, "Oh, learn to code in 15 days." Here's 15 days. 
yeah, and, and you can start punching codes and copy pasting whatever. And uh, I think that you need to have your uh, hands on problem. Yeah. You know, I was the, scared if you, if, you don't, if you don't understand anything at all, just yeah. start doing it, start moving forward. You know, the point I was trying, I was going to make about, um, you know, the, what I was saying about coding is because internally capabilities, you know, before IT or technology was seen, was seen as a cost generator, today, today you have to see it as a revenue generator. Totally. And, and the way you do that is understanding capabilities that you put together to make that happen. And coding um, is a key, key component. Now, in my case, you know, when I when I I've, I've discussed this before in other previous podcasts and whatnot about you know if you learn to, if you learn to code, I learn I know how to code. I just don't do it as other people, right? But I understand it to to the point where I know Python. <laughs> but you're not going to see me get in there to you know to write write fiction Python, right? But I I I understand enough of it to have a conversation with somebody who actually likes to doing that shit. <laughs> and basically ask them uh, and ask them to do uh things like uh i don't know like natural things like i want to do this this i want this back and like this i want this like database to be faster so don't do don't do have don't do this uh, yeah. strategy use the other one here's another technology where uh you can do put a database document database instead of a relational database and uh let's use uh like for example, Ruby on Rails and stuff at PHP because of this, this, and this, and 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 it's pretty difficult for a lot of people to talk about these topics because they see they see code and they're like kind of scared. Oh my god! Oh my is, god! That's for, that's for like rocket scientists, right? Not. <laughs> not. Nah. But uh, I don't. I'm not going to uh, say that it's easy thing, but nah. it's not an impossible thing. So if you're like running and start doing your business. Try to uh, be a little bit adventurous and, and, and start by uh, thinking in development as a way that it will make you grow your business in a faster pace, in, fa in the fastest way you can. Yeah. Because, like, putting ads, uh, printing, like, magazines, uh, you're trying to sell to people that it's, like, 60 or 80 years old, and <laughs> probably you're going to get out of business very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, who do you think should be in, you know, should lead digital transformation? When we talk about a large company, who should lead that? Uh, for, for a big company, for digital transformation, uh, I know probably it could be different people, but one of the people that don't want to do that is owners, investors, because they don't just, they're making money, right? If they're a big, money, yeah. big company, you're making, they're making money. That's what, what, what they see, but most most of the owners don't go ahead and see how much they're going to do in five years. So basically, yeah. who I think that is probably want to lead is something that's out of the box. Totally a, 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 a risk taker guy, some someone that is not inside of a box and not and is not used to work as they have been doing for all these years. So basically, you have to to put in. Like fresh blood, because there's gonna, that fresh blood and people that don't think inside of a box will provide an input to your your guys and your uh, very uh, powerful and, and important employees and collaborators to start doing and thinking that we need to do do it a different way to be, do it more efficient. Because you can easily easily get to get used to X, Y, or Z. Yeah, you know uh, the the the. the the best example that I have um, of this is the the CTO of Starbucks. Okay, the CTO of Starbucks is the only reason he became a CTO of Starbucks is because he used to play World of Warcraft. <laughs> All right. So yeah, when I when I heard about about this, I was I wasn't surprised about it because obviously he's he's like our age. And he has a different skill set. He he sees the world differently than you know somebody who's in their fifties, who's been more traditional, and uh, operates via you know authority. So what the Starbucks do? They bring in this guy because he you know he operates on a different on a different level in terms of you know how he does he's digital from the inside and inside. And um, 
you know, that it changes everything because um, have you, ever, you know, have you played World of Warcraft? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, guilt leaders and all this shit. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very, I mean, I always tell people that because they, they, they ask me like, how do you do it to collaborate online? Because I've done, you know, as you know, I've, I've done various things online, you know, I've never, I mean, I've known a bunch of, I've collaborated with people around the world and I've never met them in my life <laughs> physically. <laughs> Right. So this is like alien, alien talking behavior to other people. <laughs> right. So they ask me, how the hell does that happen? Right. <laughs> how do we become friends with somebody in freaking China? Right. <laughs> or Singapore or something like that. I don't like it's very easy. You know, it's like playing a game. <laughs> yeah, totally. You define totally. a game and then you start, you, you go in and, and try to, you know, in this case, the challenge is a game. So it's the same thing for this guy from the CTO perspective. He's never met the people he, he, he played online but he understands the skills that are necessary to make those things happen, right? And that's the future. Um, totally. So, you know, regarding the question, I don't, I've never thought that somebody in particular is, you know, should be responsible for digital, but um, in big companies, it's very hard to, 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 to not put somebody in charge of it. Um, I think it's, it's has, I, don't, I don't like defining them in terms of their, their tasks or their jobs. I like defining them in terms of their behavior. So in terms of Starbucks, they decided that the CTO would be that person. Um, in other companies, it's usually the, C the CIO, the, the chief information officer, more like the IT oriented, less the product orientation. So, but, you know, I don't think, I think in terms of that question, I think it's terms of, we have to look at it in terms of behaviors, not in terms of, um, you know, <laughs> do, they, do they know? Do, Totally. That's why I said that you have to put you, you have to bring someone that is out, out of box because uh, they can, he can just check the new behaviors and that that guy has to be uh, had experience and know what is outside of, what is in the outside world how is the outside world moving how not, not with your company is because you can have someone inside of your company that has fully knowledgeable of how they do business how they do stuff and how they have been doing stuff. But uh, if you bring someone at the outside, he's going to put a lot of input. I'm, I'm not saying just hire just a random guy, right? <laughs> There's not no. working with him no. to, to, um, to start digitalizing your company. But what I'm saying is that bringing someone that has a pretty good experience uh, and, uh, and knows what, is, what we can talk about this, right? Yeah, and, and who actually does it? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's... I mean, you're going to, I mean, it's, it's, I'm trying to figure out an example right here, but I don't, I don't mention names, but um, <laughs> I mean, for example, this company that we're, you're probably going to close the project with, you know, who I'm talking about. Um, the person in charge of IT right now is not the, the, the correct person to be there. Um, that's the bottom line. <laughs> um, I mean, that's the bottom line, right? <laughs> I mean, and there's a, and it's, it's going to be the most likely this is the biggest obstacle to yeah no and, and start doing things. It's it's is that and there's another person that I've recently come to to know that's also a bigger obstacle. Um, but um, <laughs> you know they don't get it. I mean, <laughs> they don't get it. I mean it's ridiculous. But you know in terms of I'm thinking you know I'm never thinking about this project saying well how the hell are we going to position somebody well. I'm thinking well, we've got to put some of some, some one of us to, has to be leading that, um, so they get, so they understand it or they get it right to clear the obstacles, because if, if we leave it to somebody in the inside, they got bureaucracy to deal with, and their priorities and you know their 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 and they, they can, already have so much so much on their plate that they don't want to yeah. they're, they're not going to do it. So basically, you need a fresh fresh mind uh, that that is hands on and what really is important because you can work on something that is urgent that is not that important yeah. or working on the important thing that doesn't that is not urgent and if you're not working in the important side that is not urgent there's going to be a time where that thing is urgent and important and then it's going to blow up will be mayhem in your in your business <laughs> um so what what type of things you know as continuing with that example what type of things if, if somebody's going to lead digital transformation what type of things should, should they you know take into account you know, what are they up against? Um, how, well, how to deal with it? Well, basically, you, if they you want to succeed, be, of course. 
Yeah, totally. They, they, they need to have, first of all, a lot of patience. <laughs> if you're going to like start digitalizing the company, you need a lot of patience. And you need to uh, identify exactly what kind of uh, key players are within the business. That could be one thing, an obstacle, one thing, and, and, and one thing, an ally. Because uh, a lot of people with work within the business, they know they need to change, but they don't either. They don't have uh, the enough entrepreneurship inside of the business. Second thing, leadership. Third, um, empowerment by, by their bosses or the owners. So basically, they're they're, they're like um, they're waiting for someone that can that could help to start digitalizing the business. Uh, that's that's one of the main things to see the behavior and the roles that the, 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 the people are in within the company. And next, after that, after you, after you identify your correct uh, your 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 um your people there, you need to check if and develop a correct strategy and know the whole part of how they're doing stuff, and then react uh, like set up a plan, check which technology will help them out. If they already have a technology, um, uh, they will, they will, uh, I'm sorry, they will, they, they will start attacking the end result, but definitely, and one of the things, and, and, and this guy needs to know they can start doing, doing uh, all, all this plan with A, B, C, and uh, steps, but within the middle, if something has to change, they have to redo their business. And redo it and redo it until they have a, 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 on a, um, a very very good uh, strategy. I was reading this book. Uh, there's a one minute management, and it was like pretty pretty awesome that yeah. w one of the uh, the managers was saying to the director, "Hey, I have this problem. Okay, what is your problem? Well, uh, this this and this. Okay, and what are and how are you trying to do? Well, the first of all, I'm trying to to, to do it like this with A." And then I tried to resolve it like, and didn't work. And, and I tried to resolve it like B, did work? No, it didn't work. And then I tried C and didn't work also. And I was like, what do you think that it's wrong? Well, some parts of A didn't match, but and then and then some part of B and some part of C didn't match. And why you don't mix them? Oh, you're right. Maybe the next day a little B see and then your your problem is resolved right so basically but the, the the bottom line is that you need to start in some point and you probably will be getting your result in a different point that you thought so be very open to change your strategy change your change your step in the middle of resolving a problem yeah you know when uh, you mentioned a keyword um about a minute ago um, it was adapt. So I think one of the key key challenges that people need to understand is that it's not so much of plugging and playing with tech into your business. Um, it's it's also about you know playing with it to see to understand how you can exploit it. Um, because you know, for example, B two B is not the same as B two C. Um, and and some B two Cs are not are not the you know it's, it's very it's very funny because what you see a lot a a lot of uh, you know copying and pasting I mean and in terms of how there's you know if you view somebody and say oh they they're using it this way let's do the same thing I'm like no <laughs> let's think about it deeper you know how can you exploit it to your strengths <laughs> um, and I think that's a big one because it's not about just plugging and playing with, oh, let's use, uh, as you know, as you know, there's a bunch of collaborative solutions out there. You know, Basecamp, um, Slack, um, Skype, Trello. I mean, there's a bunch of them. I mean, we can go down the line. Oops, I mean, we can yeah, usually. We, we, we can set up another another episode of yeah, this podcast. Just you know? for tools, man. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> yeah. and it's very, and I understand what business owners say, well, we don't know which one to use. <laughs> well, that's, you, that's, that's, that's the reason you've got to play with them. Because yeah, they're I mean they're not the same. They are the same, and, and, but and, they have different and, capabilities. And either the, the, yeah, totally. And you have to like learn to to see what is the key key pointers in your business to 
to identify the correct tool for you because there's a lot of people, like I said in the beginning, that they, they just get excited by the software and suddenly they don't know how to deploy it in the company and they already spend X amount of money in the budget and and your boss is like breathing in your neck because this software is not uh, uh, working and you have to identify the, the things that work and like you're rowing and suddenly that software doesn't do anything for you anymore. So yep. that that's why you need to uh, identify your key pointers in your business to select the proper tools and maybe uh, you will not it will not be enough with one tool. You have to like yeah. add three or four plugins or three or four tools to it. So the key pointer is identify your correct um, strat your correct key pointers for your business so you can adopt adapt or implement like X, Y, or Z tools. Yeah. But definitely yeah. all tools are not perfect and you're not going to be uh, able to do uh, the whole the, your whole business with only one tool. You need to be open to uh, make change on that side of it. Yeah. And, and another another key point is that um, you know the way the way companies communicate internally um, is still very much outdated. You know, it depends very much on and you know this because you you use Slack quite quite a bit. Um, oh yeah, Slack is awesome, man. I mean, you use it quite a bit. You use it, I think, a little bit more than I do. And you know, a lot of people still use. You know, they still call people on the phone. Um, and I understand that, but. <laughs> Um, you know, I like the solution that I like the most, and the Slack is cool, but I also like video, um, <laughs> because it's like, it's like talking on the phone, but also watching people, right? And it, it eliminates a lot of a, a lot of stress. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of companies should start, you know, start experimenting with these type of technologies, because collaboration is the future of business, really. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I make a huge point of that when any, any anytime I talk to anybody because I've, I'm I'm personally I'm living through it, um, and it's ridiculous how you know siloed companies internally are and also to the outside. They're just not, you know, they are just you know closed out, boxed out <laughs> from what's going on in the outside world. And um, you know, most most of the interesting stuff that happens is when you collaborate with people on the outside, including your customers. Yeah, so totally. I, I would. I, I've been working within a project, like I said. I haven't known those guys uh, from Ukraine and from India. They're working for me, and they're awesome. And our tools is being basically being chat, Slack, and um, and having their profiles like GitHub developers, and and you can see their work and their portfolios, and they're trust trusty uh, people. So, and they're delivering right now. Also, we're we're deploying right now a personal project for for food delivery. That's gonna be awesome, and 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 I've been working with this guys from India. And it's 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 totally an excellent, and it's pretty also risky for me and risky for my team because basically you're putting all your chips in one table, and uh, I'm, some people does don't think that that's smart, but uh, you need to adopt the changes and you have to change your strategies and. And uh, risk a little bit to get um, either experience or a pretty worthy or profitable company. Yeah, I mean it's, it's like a, you know like we said at the beginning. I mean transformation is yeah it has to do with um, with the business, but it's also ha it has to do internally with how you know how you operate, how you get get things done. And um, you know, remember I used to be I used to have my office at the virtual virtual place, right? Um, it was funny because the the other businesses that were there, I mean they were just basically buying the their office their office space because it looked nice. Yeah. And I and I went in there and I you know I talked to these people and they were like, oh I just have an office because it looks nice. And I'm like, you don't get the concept of this thing. <laughs> I mean in the future your you know most of your employees are not gonna be in your office. They're gonna be remote. <laughs> Totally. Right, and if you cannot accept that, you know, because that's the wave of the future. Um, I mean, that's that's the bottom line. And they didn't get it. I mean, it's again, it's the the legacy mindset. Um, and I think you know, if if, if there's one point I I, I want to make in this is that is that right? It, internally, digital is is more of a killer than the outside, because if you, internally you cannot you don't operate digitally. 
you might as well kill yourself because on the outside, you're going to understand what's going on on the outside. Really, I mean, frankly, <laughs> I mean, you know, our, you know, the, 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 I always tell people is, is um, you have to learn as fast as the world is changing. And, you know, you, uh, you're either changing with it or you're changing it or just get, you're just waiting to be obliterated by it. But <laughs> or she's gonna see how it changed and you do nothing about it. Yeah, I mean, my God, I mean, we can go on and on and on with this topic, but if there's if there's one message you'd like to leave people with, which one would it be? Uh, explore, explore, identify, know yourself, know your business, uh, take a peek to the big companies, as, as Jorge said, and see how how they're doing. Like, and don't stop about how your com local competitors are. Just look how they're yeah. doing in Europe, how they're doing in China, how they're doing in Asia. Uh, um, uh, I say China, but I want to say Asia. But, like, how they're doing in the United States and in, in Latin America. There's a lot of people doing a lot of stuff, right? If, you're ha if, you, if you have an idea, I'm pretty sure that thousands of people are thinking that probably the same and do, do things in a different ways. So just try to snoop around, take a pick to your... Uh, with the outside world, with with the, with the market leaders, and start following them, and um, don't be afraid of change. Just identify your key pointers. Uh, invest time in in identifying the correct software for you or the correct strategy, and then start rolling out uh, slowly to your company, and 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 that that will be your next generation business. Yeah. So that's that's basically what 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 my my recommendations are, are my my message is that if you believe that the internet is not going to change your business or your industry you know you might as well point a you know put a bullet in your head uh because it's already happening and the way that that is happening is most of the stuff we just we just discussed you know internally and externally everything changes with the internet um you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, good, a good way to get a, a, a pulse of what's going on is to look at the startup world. Um, you know, talk to, to young people like us, you know, well, <laughs> well, we are young. <laughs> but even, the, even, even younger generations, because that's the way they use stuff is, 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 is what's going to happen. I mean, it's, it's, it's real. I mean, it's true. It's true. It's funny, but... You know, and even like people like you and me who are like mid thirties or starting in our thirties, it's it's um, you know we got we got to keep up with this stuff. Um, <laughs> we got to keep up with this stuff. I've been knowing a of like, like uh, twenty year old guys that have a lot of ideas that wow, it's they're pretty cool. Actually, I love to. I'm I'm going I'm starting uh, teaching classes over at college, mm -hmm. and. It's pretty interesting then when you get to know youth people that think a little bit different uh, from from different generations. So just be 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 open to listen and have options into the table. It will help you a lot to take key key decisions in your company. Yeah. Um, all right, man. So anything else? I think we're kind of like right up the hour. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, just. You know, like that, just change. Don't keep, don't be scared of it. Change is good. Just try to do it like the, with the best strategy you can. And if you need something, any any kind of uh, questions that they might maybe we can help you out. Um, providing my email with Jonathan C. I'm um, Jonathan at Synergy A dot M X, and you can uh, visit me on my website Synergy dot M X. Um, and uh, I will be glad to help you out if this. If this is this something we can discuss? I'm very open, and uh, we'll be uh, very happy to to, to uh, tell a couple of experiences that we that we had in the, the past 10, 10 years. Okay, and by the way, I'll be adding your links to the blog post. Uh, this is this one's this one's this is a live video. It's going to be recorded. Mm -hmm. Well, it's being recorded, and I'll post that on my blog, and also the audio will be posted on SoundCloud. Um, do you have a Twitter, or do you even um, use it? I use Twitter. Uh, let me uh, give you. Yeah, just or just just send it to me, and uh, I'll put it on the on the blog post, um, and we'll we'll take it from there. 
But uh, okay, man. So thanks, thanks for being on the show, and um, it was great talking to you, and you know, comparing our experiences, listening to what you're doing, and um, in your previous experience. And uh, hopefully, we can we can have another chat on here. Yeah, sure. Any 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 time you invite me, I'm oh, glad to, to be here. I appreciate your invitation, and I know that you that you uh, get to a lot of a lot of people listen to you and and and, and reads about you, and it's pretty pretty awesome. As a moment here uh, sharing your, your podcast like guys thank you very much for listening and I'll we'll keep in touch all right man take it thanks and uh, see you later thank you bye all right